It's been a very busy day. Welcome to the African History Network show. It is uh, Friday, July 2nd, 2021, and we are live. I was on Roland Martin and filtered today for two hours. It's been a very, very, it's been a very, very busy day. And we have a lot to talk about today. So, a lot of people are talking about Shakari Richardson, the track and field athlete, who who um, tested positive for marijuana. And we know that it, it, the, 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 there has been a viral video of her um, running the 100 meter and qualifying for the Olympics. But a month later, that was on June 19th, but a month later, her drug test comes back and she tests positive for marijuana. Now, marijuana is a banned substance in the Olympics. And even though this was not for performance enhancing reasons, it doesn't matter. The rules are the rules. So we're going to talk about this today. We talked about this on Roland Martin and the Filter today. Uh, we're going to talk about this uh, some today. She was interviewed by Savannah Guthrie on uh, the, the Today Show this morning on NBC. And she accepts responsibility for what happened. Um, she talked about uh, a week before uh, she, she qualified for the Olympics, her biological mother dying. She talked about finding out about that from a, a reporter. She uh, talked about what she was going through and her mental health, etc. So we'll talk about Shakari Richardson and should she get a second chance. I talked about this on Roland Martin and Filter today. And uh, I said I think she should. There are extenuating circumstances here. Now you have many people who immediately started comparing this to Michael Phelps. When in 2009... Uh, a photo surfaced of Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer, and in the photo he is uh, smoking marijuana in the bong. Uh, he confirmed that the photo was real and that it was him, but this case with Shakari Richardson is much different than Michael Phelps. and. I've seen a lot of the memes floating around on social media. Most of that information is wrong. If people did a five-minute Google search, they would realize how wrong it is. So I'm surprised people don't use Google to research some of this information. Um, we're going to talk about the, the differences between the two also. And uh, Michael Phelps, his, um, his punishment... His suspension was three times as long as Shakari Richardson. So I, I looked at a lot of comments and people, you know, I posted about this on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. People were posting about it. People were commenting about it. And it's just a lot of misinformation floating around. When the policy from the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency is very clear. But there are extenuating circumstances as well here. So we'll discuss that. Now we're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and uh, my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. So uh, everybody watching us there, share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Uh, invite your friends to tune in as well. And we're going to help separate fact from fiction also uh, on today's show. And then... We'll, uh, after we discuss Shakari Richardson and uh, break that down and deal with the difference between her case and Michael Phelps, uh, we're going to continue our discussion from Thursday, which picked up from the discussion on our show on Tuesday. And this deals with how U.S. highways have been used to destroy African American communities, how U.S. highways have been used to destroy prosperous African-American communities, okay? 
and there, there, there's a history behind this. And um, we, we saw that here in Detroit as well. Went all across the country, 41,000 miles of U.S. interstate highways uh, ran across the country, ran through about 1,600 African American communities. And now that those, uh, a lot of those infrastructures are crumbling and it's time to replace them, the question is being asked, okay, so what should we do now? Um, should we uh, restore these communities uh, somehow, et cetera? There have been a number of articles written about this. Um, there's also a piece from, we talked about the big article from uh, NBC News uh, dealing with uh, bulldozed and bisected highway construction built a legacy of inequality. Uh, bulldozed and bisected highway construction built a legacy of, uh, of inequality. Okay, we, we talked about this on the show uh, yesterday. And, and we'll continue that discussion uh, also. Okay. All right, now, um, I have a Sunday, uh, July 4th, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My uh, new online course starts, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. This is a 10-week uh, online course that I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history and uh, what led up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place also. All right, so um, we'll, we'll post the link here. You can register for the online course. Uh, we do the class live. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch it over and over again. Uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Uh, that starts up Sunday, July 4th, 2021. Uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Now, on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or a woman's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, uh, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828, the sign up for our email newsletter. Uh, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828, the sign up for our email newsletter, or visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right. Um, so call in number 313-778-7600 is the call in number. If you have a, a quick question or comment, 313-778-7600. Uh, is the call in number if you have a quick question or comment. All right, now uh, I'm going to, we're going to uh, share with you some of that interview from uh, the Today Show. I'm going to send you, uh, I'll send this to you, um, Ed. I'll send, it, I'll send it to you right now. Just give me a second here. You know, I, um, Anytime something like this happens, uh, I think it's important to, uh, Ed, do me a favor, text me your email address. Uh, anything, something like this happens, I think it's important to get the facts as much as possible. If we look at this piece here from uh, NBC News that goes through and really uh, breaks this down, uh, U.S. Sprinter, Shakari Richardson suspended for one month after failed drug tests. Uh, U.S. Sprinter Shakari Richardson suspended after one month, suspended for one month after failed drug test. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, it's susceptible. It's it's uh, it's not a um, performance enhancing drug and it's legal in a number of states. 
Okay, they don't have nothing to do with the U.S. doping agency. All the athletes know what the rules are up front. All the athletes agree to the rules. Just like your parents told you, I don't I don't care what your friends can do at their house. At this house, this is what the law is. This is what the rule is. They don't have nothing. To, Oregon, uh, California, all that. They don't have nothing to do with the Olympics. So th this is why it's important to get the facts uh, before you start uh, start operating based upon misinformation. Now, I'm going to turn on the screen share here and we'll go to the clip. Uh, we'll go to the clip after the break. We're coming up on a break here in two minutes. Um, U.S. Sprinter Shikari Richardson suspended for one month after failed drug tests. So U.S. track sensation Shikari Richardson, who punched her ticket to uh, the Tokyo Games after uh, winning the women's 100 meter race last month has been suspended from the Olympic team after testing positive for THC, the chemical in cannabis. Now, Richardson failed uh, a drug test following her Olympic qualifying 100 meter race victory, race victory at the U.S. Olympic track and field trials in Eugene, Oregon on June 19th, according to the United States Anti-Doping Agency. Now, uh, marijuana is legal in Oregon, but it's still on the banned list of substances in the Olympics. So it's, it's important for people to understand this because there's a whole lot of misinformation floating around on social media. I don't know where y'all get this BS from. Five minute Google search will solve all these, uh, will, will clarify a lot of this stuff. Um, now, Shakari Richardson. Uh, Richardson's competitive results obtained on June 19th, 2021, it, including her Olympic qualifying results at the team trials have been disqualified and she forfeits any medals, points and prizes in court. A statement from the U.S. Uh, the U.S. anti-doping uh, agency said uh, we're going to continue this on the other side of the break and separate fact from fiction for you. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 910 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Black on Purpose Television Network. Yes, Black on Purpose Television Network. All black, all positive, all the time. The largest black owned streaming television network in the world. Bringing our people together worldwide. Controlling our messages, our story, our way. Black TV, the way it should be. Black music, black history, and more. 30 plus channels, thousands of shows. Black on Purpose Television Network, subscribe now. Gain knowledge in minutes from insightful summaries of progressive and socially conscious books. Blacklisted gives you access to curated content that'll satisfy your curiosity to learn and understand different perspectives. Empower yourself through inspirational and actionable ideas. It's easy to read or listen to on the go. Blacklisted. Empower yourself. Start your free trial today. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future radio I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Friday, July, uh, Friday, July 2nd, 2021. I think I said June at the beginning of the show. I'm not sure. Friday has been a busy day. Uh, Friday, July 2nd, 2021. And we are live. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, we're talking about, right before the break, we started talking about Shikari Richardson. And, and um, we talked about her at the beginning of uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered today also. Um, I'm a guest, I'm a, a panelist, uh, each Friday, usually on, uh, Roland Martin unfiltered. And, uh, that was the topic today dealing with her suspension, uh, from the Olympics. Okay. And we went through and broke down, uh, instead of separating fact from fiction here. Okay. I just emailed this to you, uh, Ed, uh, I want to go to uh, clip number one. It's the second video in the article from NBC News. Uh, just cue that up. Let me know when it's queued up. So uh, right before the break, I was sharing with you uh, this piece from NBC News. Now, she was interviewed on um, the Today Show. 
this morning by Savannah Guthrie. We're going to share an excerpt of that interview with you also. Now, uh, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency, which is the one that sets the rules, that what, what's legal in Oregon or California, what have you, regarding marijuana, don't have nothing to do with the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. Uh, they said they put out a statement that said Richardson's competitive results obtained on June 19th, 2021, including her Olympic qualifying results at the team's trials have been disqualified and she forfeits any medals, points and prizes. Um, any, any medals, points and prizes, uh, a statement from the uh, uh, U.S. ADA said she also accepted a one month period of inel ineligibility that began on June 28th, 2021. Now, normally in a situation like this, the suspension would be for uh, three months. OK, her suspension is for one month because she uh entered into a counseling program and completed the counseling program okay she entered into a counseling program and completed a counseling program so instead of a three-month suspension like michael phelps got that everybody wants to compare her to and then like research this her suspension is one month so right there is different than Michael Phelps. Well, we're going to go through and compare the two and show how what happened to Michael Phelps is totally different. Um, now, athletes who test positive for a substance of abuse with THC, which THC was newly classified as in 2021, athletes who test positive for a substance of abuse usually receive a three month suspension if they can establish that, quote, their use of the substance occurred out of competition and was unrelated to sport performance, was unrelated to sport performance. So it was like it's not steroids. It's not a performance enhancing uh, substance. OK. So. They usually receive a three month suspension. Her suspension was one month. Now, the U.S. anti-doping agency. Uh, said uh, Richardson, quote, successfully completed a counseling program regarding her use of cannabis, successfully completed a counseling program regarding her use of cannabis, which uh, the U.S. ADA ru uh, rules knocks her ineligibility down to one month of suspension. It could have been three months of suspension. Now, on the Today Show, uh, on, on Friday, July 2nd, uh, Shakari Richardson said right now, I'm just putting, uh, I'm just putting all of my energy into dealing with what I need to deal with to heal myself. Okay. Now Richardson's competitive results obtained on June 19th, 2021, in, including her Olympic qualifying results at the team trials have been disqualified and she forfeits any medals, points, and prizes, a statement from the U.S. Uh, ADA said. Uh, I'm going to go further down here. Now, uh, on NBC, uh, on uh, the Today Show, uh, today she said, right now I'm just pulling, I'm just putting all of my energy into dealing with what I need to deal with to heal, my, to heal myself. OK, she said, I want to take responsibility for my actions. She added, I'm not looking for an excuse. I want to take responsibility for my actions. I'm not looking for an excuse. OK. Um, all right. Let's go back to this clip here. This is from the Today Show, uh, July 2nd, 2021. Young athlete who has the world of sports buzzing. Ah, yes. 21 year old track star Shakari Richardson has already set records. And now, as she gets ready for the Tokyo Olympics, it is clear she is just getting started. We are so pumped, man. We get to talk with her live in just a Woo. minute. But first, Savannah has a little bit more on her rocket ship ride to fame. She is Shakari Richardson, the exuberant and glamorous U.S who just clinched her first Olympic spot in the USA track and field trials this week. Oh, I'm going to leave The fact that I am an Olympian, no matter what it says or anything, I am an Olympian. 
the 21-year-old Dallas native won the 100-meter dash with blazing hair and a blazing fast time. 10.86 seconds. She was so dominant on the track, she even pointed at the clock during the last 20 meters of her semifinal heat. She points to the time, 10.65. I just want the world to know that I'm that girl that every time I step on the track, I'm going to try to do what it is that me, my coach, my support team believe I can do. Yeah! To celebrate her first trip to the Olympics, she ran into the stands and shared a big hug with her grandmother, Betty Hart, a moment even more poignant because she lost her biological mother just the week before. My family has kept me grounded. This year has been crazy for me, going from just last week to losing my biological mother. And I'm still here. She carried first onto the stage after winning the 2019 NCAA title as a freshman. And now that she has clinched that Olympic spot, she is, as she says, that girl. Mm. Um, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go to clip two. I'm going to send you the clip I uh, wanted. We got it mixed up. Um, we talked about this on Roland Martin Unfiltered. We're going to go to clip two, Roland Martin Unfiltered. We talked about this on Roland Martin Unfiltered today. I was on the panel. Um, let's go to this clip. So here's what happened. So uh, she had she had discovered from a reporter her biological mother had passed away. Right. Uh, so so what her folks have said is that uh, when you know Florida folks can she no one. Um, Michael, obviously anybody. Uh, and emphasize with uh, with that devastating news, right? But it's also a reality. Mm-hmm. You've been running track your whole life. You've been running track in high school. You ran track at LSU. You now are a world class sprinter. For your entire track life, marijuana has been banned. Right. It's on the banned list. This is not, and also it's the rules of your sport. If this mm-hmm. is the NFL. Where if you fail a drug test, you go into their program, you continue playing. They have a protocol established. The NBA has a protocol established. I understand that this is sports. I understand about healing. We have people on talk about the therapeutic benefits of it. But the reality is the sport in which you are in, that's really not allowed. I, be, I equate this and I say this to my nieces and nephews and other people as well. Marijuana is legal in Washington State. Oregon, California, these two. But guess what? It's not legal in America. It's not, it's not, marijuana is not uh, uh, legalized in this country. Right. Employers out here can require you to take a drug test. And if you fail the drug test, you can't get the job. Now, I, I, I feel people who say, man, this makes no sense. It's a natural plant. But if everybody knows the rules and you broke the rules, you suffer the consequences of the rules. Yeah, you know, Roland, this is um, this is tragic, and I, I, I've researched this as well. So uh, he, here's my take on this. Uh, number one, she knew the rules up front. Two, there are extenuating circumstances with this. Now, I, I want people to understand she could have faced a three-month suspension because that's based upon the rules of the U.S. Uh, anti-doping. Uh, yeah, could have been three months, which she means could. she's completely out of the Olympics. She right. still has an opportunity to be put on the 4x100 relay team, but she's going to miss the 100 meters, which is where, right. where she was favored to win the gold medal. So basically, uh, athletes who test positive for a substance of abuse, which THC was newly classified as in 2021, usually receive a three-month suspension if they can establish that their use of the substance occurred out of competition and was unrelated to the sport performance. Now, she entered into a uh, counseling program, so she is only getting a one-month suspension. Compare that to Michael Phelps in 2009. He got a three-month suspension. I know people want to erroneously compare it to Michael Phelps. Those are two different situations. But, but, but also, but also, but also, but also, but everybody who's watching, right? It ain't apples to apples. Right. Michael Phelps, a photo was shown right. That's of Michael say. Phelps with a bomb, That's what which I'm was six about. months after, after the Olympics, the 2000 so Olympics. Right. He never tested positive. Right. So 
I've already seen that. Oh, no. Michael Phelps, the white boy. They let the white boy perform. This is what happens when people recycle BS memes. Michael Phelps is the white boy. Michael Phelps is the white boy. Michael Phelps is the white boy. This is what happens when people recycle BS memes that they didn't go research before they retweeted them and reposted them. This is what happens when you do this. Because if you had done a five-minute Google search, you would have realized that Michael Phelps lost sponsorship from Kellogg. He lost uh, the, the Olympics, withdrew financial support from him, and his suspension was three times as long as Shikari Richardson. Now, to make a long story short, based upon the circumstances here, she's admitted. She didn't say, oh, uh, they lied. She, she accepted responsibility, and she entered into a council program. Based upon the circumstances in this specific case, I think they should do the humane thing and, and, and let her compete in the uh, 100 meters based upon the circumstances, and she entered into a council program also. But, 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 here's, the deal. but here's the deal. You say do the humane thing. Okay. But there are athletes. Sure. And, and so, and, and, and again, look, I'm from Texas. Right. I would love to see the homegirl from Texas run. Right. And we all want to have empathy. We want to have compassion. Uh, right. Brittany, but look, that, that's enough. That's another uh, sister. I'm going to pull up in a second. Um, another sister who had gotten suspended. She had, she had gotten suspended. And what happened was uh, she was, a, she was a hurdler. Um, and her name was, um, Brianna McNeil. She got a five year ban mm-hmm. because she missed her drug test. Now, she says, she says she missed, she had an abortion. And she said she missed the drug test two days after her abortion. What happens with their rules, Brittany, is that you're drug testing. You don't know when you're going to get drug tested. And so they call you and it's like, we're on our way. If you don't answer, if you don't answer the phone, if you don't indicate where you are, uh, then there's a problem. And this, this happened actually um, more than once. But that's not, she did qualify for the Olympic team. Uh, she came in second at the trials. It's 100 meter uh, uh, hurdles. And so uh, what happened was, and so she, she talked about it in terms of what happened. Uh, she said why she missed it. And there are, it was called an at home appointment. An at home appointment. So this is, this is according to this story. McNeil said that the anti doping ban derived from her missing an at home appointment with officials in January 2020. She said she was at home recovering from an abortion that she had two days prior to the appointment and that when officials arrived at her home, she didn't hear anyone. And then according to this story, she, she was banned because there were many inaccuracies found in documents that were meant to prove she had an abortion. She called it, an, she called it uh, that uh, it was a miscommunication. But Brittany, there are other athletes who missed their at-home appointment for drug testing, and they've been suspended. And so they make it clear to everybody, these are the rules. You're going to get drug tested a lot. So what, you know, what do we do? Whether it's Shikari, whether it's this sister who said, well, I missed my at-home, I was at an abortion. I was at home, but I didn't hear them knocking. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it's it's tough, Roland, because on one hand, sure, I want to say the rules are the rules, you know what they were in advance, stick to them, right? But I want to point out that rules are made by people, right? And, and we need to think about the reason behind those rules, and if those rules always make sense, and if those rules are actually fair. You know, at one point, I believe it was 2011, both CBD and THC were banned, and I believe that change was made more recently, where now it's just... Uh, THC this band, the, the substance that was in Shikari's blood. So, you know, I, I think it's tough. And again, I, I mean, based on the, the research that I did find, and someone correct me if they saw something else, you know, they, they have not definitively said that marijuana, you know, is a performance enhancing drug. And if it is no, not- no, 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 no. It's not that it's a performance enhancing drug. It is on the list of banned substances right. from the anti-doping agency. Yes. Exactly. That, so not, but Roland, answer me this question because I hear you. But knowing that, so tell me why it's banned. Why is it banned? It's, it's their not. rule. It's their rule. But that's what I'm saying. Every, right? Here's the deal. Every track and field athlete has to abide by it. It's a bunch of black people who made the Olympic team who didn't smoke weed. And if they do smoke weed, they didn't smoke it before the Olympic trials and they didn't get positive. 
I hear you, but I just what I'm saying is I think that we're seeing a reevaluation not only in the United States. I mean, we just saw uh, Supreme Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas talk about how he, even he is talking about how we need to reevaluate the United States on a federal level. We're seeing changes globally, and I hope hey, that pa- I pa- pa- pause it, pause it right there. I mean, pause it right else, there. You know? uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I like Brittany is speaking right now. I just found out on the day show she's a former uh, Miss Black America or Miss Black USA, which one of them I don't know. But it, this, this don't have nothing to do <laughs> with the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency <laughs> with their policies. <laughs> what Clarence Thomas said was legal in this state, that state. They don't have nothing to do with what the rules are for the Olympics. <laughs> That's per- period. That has nothing to do with it. Three one three seven seven eight seventy six hundred is the calling number. If you have a quick question or comment, three one three seven seven eight seventy six hundred is the calling number. If you have a quick question or comment, we're going to go back to this clip here because I think I come up uh, next and ask some more clarity to this conversation. All that other stuff don't have nothing to do with this right here. Okay, I just want people to understand. All right, let's go back to the clip, Ed. not going to, at least for her own 100. But I do think that this is high time for us to reevaluate why that is a rule. Why is that a rule? I get it. It's a rule. It's a rule across the board, but it's time for us to reevaluate. Right. Exactly. See, philosophy, the thing for me that really jumps out here is, uh, and I, look, uh, 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 Benjamin Dixon, I'm, I'm going to pull up Benjamin's tweet, and I think Benjamin is like wrong as hell uh, <laughs> on this one. I, I, Benjamin is on the show. Uh, I like Benjamin. This is a tweet uh, that Benjamin uh, sent out right here. He said, black athletes should just boycott Team America since Team America had such an issue with black athletes. No, I'm sorry, Ben. A whole bunch of black athletes made the team who didn't smoke weed, who didn't test positive, who didn't miss their appointments. I, I'm sorry. I don't see this as an attack on black athletes because right. one star messed up. I just don't. So, well, I'm, I'm, I agree with you 100%. But let's, let's look at what, Brittany, you, you pointed out. Rules are made by people. That's everything. I mean, we, we live in a society where rules are made by people. I mean, yeah, I mean, hell, I, I, I own a company. I make rules. Your ass, make gotta rules. Show, your ass gotta show up at work at 11 a.m. If you walk your ass in at 6 p.m. at 1 o'clock, your ass ain't gonna have a job with you. <laughs> I mean, but that's what I'm saying. The rules are made. Now, here's the other thing. THC, you know what's on the list, but more importantly, it's also a drug. No, it doesn't enhance. It doesn't make you jump faster and all of those things. It slows you down. As an athlete, your speed is everything. Whether you're talking about football, baseball, basketball, track and field, soccer, your speed, your awareness is everything. I mean, there is a reason for this. Now, I think that the, the, the larger we have to ask this question. Is this the example? If we're talking about push for Shikari, push for Shikari, what is the example that we want to set for black girls in track and field? What is the example? What do you say to a black girl, to a young black girl? Shikari is 21 years old. She is, as Roland laid out, from high school to college and the whole nine, she has been in this whole field. She's 21 years old. She still has a lot of maturity and a lot of growing to do. But for those who are looking at her and they, the black girls that see themselves in Shikari, Shikari Richardson, what should we say? See, we, 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 we're talking about the now. We have to look at the future because we are should not be in a space to advocate for Shikari now because then that opens the door for us to advocate for what? The next black girl later? No. These are black athletes. If you're an athlete, you take care of your body. They often say your body is your temple. And if that's, the, if that's the message that we want to get across to young black girls and black boys in any field of sport, then we should look at this and then use this as a teachable moment to help them to see that the break the rules, if you if you decide not to do what's what's required for you to do, you're going to suffer the consequences. I, I, I just I just think here, Michael, and, and we're going to talk about another story. Sure. That has an impact that, that deals with black people in the Olympics, which I think the Olympics, they are dead wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is what, again, that I, I would say this to, again, my staff, 
I would say it to my frat brothers. I would say it to my church members. I would say this to my nieces and nephews. I would say this to other family members. I hear you. I do believe that we have this, 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 this different system. I think it's crazy that right now you've got marijuana, that's a multi-billion dollar industry, that's legalized in some states, but not others. Right. I believe that you have these differing uh, approaches to it. You've got some prosecutors who say they're not going to prosecute uh, a minor marijuana arrest. Um, there are people who say you shouldn't be drug testing or causing people to lose jobs or not get jobs because of, of marijuana. But here's what I know and understand. It ain't the law right now. Mm. I think that you can mm. fight to change it. Right. I think that you can fight to, ch to change with the Olympics. Football players fought for the NFL to alter their rules when it came to marijuana, and they did. The mm. NBA players, they fought to change the rules to alter it, and they did. And so it's a different approach there. But what we're dealing with here is that all at all track and field athletes across the world, and I think this is the most important thing that our people watching, and, I, and I've been seeing all every kind of comment. Right. Athletes across the world are giving the same list. Mm -hmm. Now, we know they're cheaters. We know the Olympics banned uh, the Russian team because all of them were doping. We know back in the 80s and 90s, the Eastern Russian, uh, hell, they, 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 we ain't going to talk about how they were doping. We can go on and on and on. And we also know the number of American athletes who have been busted for doping and performance-enhancing drugs. This boils down to here. How you cope with grief mm -hmm. is something that we have to deal with. But you are preparing for four years for this moment. The Olympics is every four years. You you made the team. You performed well. But part of performing is also the drug test. They all go together. Right. You can't say, well, hey, she could have win the gold. We all let her run. Because every other athlete who went to the youth Olympic trial had to be in that cup. Every yeah. single one. Right. Yeah, you know, um, I think this whole thing is a little complicated. I went and read the rules, um, and there is an appeals process. Here, one, she accepted responsibility. It's not like she's saying, oh, they're lying on me. They're setting me up. She's accepting responsibility. She told what happened. Uh, two, she entered into a counseling program as well. Um, in the appeals process, you know, I, based upon the circumstances, her mother died, her biological mother died, and, you know, she's dealing with a lot. Now, if there had been a situation where she had tested positive for marijuana previously before other races and everything I read, this is the first time she tested positive, well, then I would say no. But it, 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 in the appeals process, you know, I, I really hope they um, have to take all this into account and, and, and let her compete based upon these circumstances. But I do understand the rules. I do understand the rules. And I also understand, you know, they have an appeals process for a reason as well. But uh, this one here, I think, is the, everything involved, uh, all uh, the details taken into account, I think is different than maybe some other instances that we, uh, that we may see of doping or people purposely in uh, performance-enhancing drugs, the Russians, things like that. Okay. So okay. Pa 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 pause it right there, uh, Ed. What I, what I pause it right there. Okay. You, you all can watch the full show. We did a two-hour show today. Uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered. We dealt with a number of different topics, had different guests on also. I'm um, a panelist every Friday uh, on Roland Martin Unfiltered. So check that out. It was a really good discussion. Um, I want to go to, um, we're going to go to this clip here and then go to the phone lines quickly. This clip is about four minutes. Th this is the clip I was looking for from the Today Show. This is um, uh, Shikari uh, Richardson. Uh, today on the today show explaining what happened. She was interviewed by Savannah Guthrie. Savannah Guthrie. Let's go to this clip, uh, Ed. I am human, Savannah. 
Chanel, thank you. And Shakari Richardson joins us now. Good morning, Shakari. I just want to ask a simple question first. How are you doing? Um, I'm blessed to be alive. It's ready. This is not easy. This is a hard moment that you're in right now. And uh, I thank you for being on. And I know you wanted to tell your story. So tell me, you know, what happened? What led up to this positive test? Um, just honestly, for this, I want to say responsibility for my actions. I know what I did. I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm allowed not to do. And I still made that decision. But, um, not making an excuse or looking for any empathy in my case, but just however, being in that position of my life, finding out something like that, something that I would say is probably one of the biggest things that have impacted me positively and negatively in my life when it comes to dealing with the relationship I have with my mother. So that definitely was a very heavy topic on me and people don't understand what it's like to have to our people do. We all have our different struggles. We all have our different things we do with. But to put on a face, to have to go in front of the world and put on a face and hide my pain. Um, like, who? I don't know. Who are you? Or who am I to tell you how to cope when you're dealing with a pain or you're dealing with a struggle that you've never experienced before or that you've never thought you would have to do it? Like, who am I to tell you how to cope? Who am I to tell you that you're wrong for hurting? So I think just honestly, just leading up to that, feeling with my mental health, feeling my, with my mental as is, with leading up to the game, um, every time I've been on the track, definitely expect it to be um, a record-breaking time or something like that. So just with that um, pressure in itself, but also just another thing, which is actually in my first full professional career, my first full professional um, circuit this year due to, you know, the pandemic. So just considering all of that, all of that put together in my long time with my agent, my sponsor, my, my sponsorship, my family, um, knowing we did know all of this stuff. Um, Shakari, I, I just want people to understand where you're coming from um, and tell me if, if this is correct, but you, it was a few days before your big race and the trials, you found out that your biological mother had passed away. Um, you found out when a reporter told you, and it was after that that um, you, you had, it ingested some kind of marijuana. I, I should mention, you were in Oregon. It's legal in Oregon. You didn't violate any law, but it was against the rules of your sport, and as you said, you knew that. But is, is that what happened? Is that how this unfolded? Honestly, um, yes, that is the story. I had an interview scheduled with my agent. I knew I was having an interview. I knew um, going to an interview. Like, it was, I was just taking it open on a normal interview, and then on an interview to hear that information come from a complete stranger uh, was definitely triggering, was definitely nerve-shocking, because it's just like, how are you to tell me that? Like, you know, it's like, and I, no offense against him at all. He just on um, his job, but definitely that's me in a state of mind, in a state of, of emotional panic in anything. And still knowing that I still, even though I'm here, I still have to go out and put on a performance for, um, put up a performance on my dream, but I think to compete to what it is. So yes, yeah, definitely trigger and from there just blinded with, blinded by emotions, blinded by bad news, blinded by just hurting, hiding hurt, honestly. For the fact that I know that I can't hide myself. So at least in some type of way, I was just trying to hide my pain. Yeah. You know, the um, Olympic officials, the U.S. track and field, the anti-doping agencies now have a decision before them. Um, unfortunately, you will not be able to compete in the Olympics in your in your race, your individual race, 100 meters. Um, but there is a chance. It's, it's a small chance, but there's a chance you could go to the Olympics and take part in the relay. Are you hopeful for that? Is that what you're holding out hope for at this moment? Right now, I'm just putting all of my time and energy into dealing with what I need to do with to heal myself. So if I'm allowed to receive that blessing, 
and I'm grateful for it. But it's not right now. I'm going to just focus on myself. Okay, pause it right now, there. Pause it um, right there, Ed. Pause it right there. Okay, so uh, check that out. Uh, re read the article from um, NBC News. They have the um, interview in there from uh, the Today Show. Uh, name of the article, U.S. Sprinter Shakari Richardson suspended for one month after failed drug test. They have the full, like it's about a 12-minute segment there. We just don't have time to, to play the whole segment uh, uh, here. Uh, very quickly before we run out of time, uh, the, the rules are clear, but this is heartbreaking on many levels. I'm going to go back to uh, this article here. Um, OK, now this is from uh, U.S. Anti-Doping Agency CEO Travis Tigert. OK, uh, he said the rules are clear, but this is heartbreaking on many levels. Hopefully her acceptance of uh, hopefully hopefully her acceptance of responsibility and apology will be an important example to us all that we can successfully overcome our regrettable decisions despite the costly consequences of this one to her, said uh, U.S. Anti-Doping Agency CEO Travis Tigert. All right, now, uh, as I said, she has entered into a counseling, she entered into a counseling program, so they reduced, the, it would have been a three-month uh, suspension like Michael Phelps got, uh, they reduced this to a one month uh, suspension and then also a statement from uh, USA Today track and field uh, said Shakari Richardson's situation is incredibly unfortunate and devastating for everyone. Uh, athlete health and well-being well-being continue to be one of US ATF's most critical priorities. And we will work with Shakari to ensure she has ample resources to overcome any mental health challenges now and in the future, the statement said. All right, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. Uh, we're gonna keep broadcasting for a few more minutes. We're out of time here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Uh, sorry to the callers, uh, uh, call back, uh, we're back on Monday. Right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win, we're kind of forever. We'll talk to you next time, peace. All right, stand by everybody, stand by, stand by. All right, we're gonna continue for a few more minutes here. It's been a very, very long day. Hey, I wanna remind you that uh, my new online course starts up Sunday, uh, July 4th, the 4th of July, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Okay, this is a 10 week online course that I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history and we deal with what led up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. All right, so we do the class live. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch it over and over again. Uh, if you visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, scroll down the page. We have the information for the online course here. Click on register here. It takes you to the next page and click on enroll. The class is regularly $130. It's on sale, $80. Uh, all the sets, and we do the classes live. All the sessions are recorded, as I said. Uh, so you can go back and watch it over and over again. All right. Now, as soon as you register, what we're, what we're going to do is also enroll you in my Saturday class that's taking place right now. The Saturday class meets Saturdays, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have two more classes in the Saturday class left. OK, two more classes in the Saturday class. Uh, so you can uh, as soon as you register, you can go and watch classes one through eight of the Saturday class, and that's archived. Classes one through eight of the Saturday class is archived. Uh, and then you can also um, watch, uh, you'll also be registered for the new Sunday course that starts up Sunday, July 4th, uh, 2021, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, um, I am also doing a, um, I'm also doing a free preview of the online course on Saturday, July 3rd, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? I'm doing a free preview of the uh, online course, the 10-week online course, Saturday, July 3rd, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we have it, uh, I, I did a post today about it on our, Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. I'm going to post the information right here on the thread of the broadcast. 
Um, and the preview, when I teach the classes in Crowdcast, which is a separate platform, uh, and the preview is in Crowdcast as well. I just posted the link here. You can register for it. It's free. I'm going to, and we're going to do an overview of the online course. Uh, cause some people want to, you know, see what the class is like and things like that. See the platform before they register for the course. And, uh, once you watch the, once you go through the uh, preview with me, we're going to do the preview live Saturday, July 3rd, 4 p.m. to uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, once you do that, then you'll be able to register for the full course. Or if you just want to register for class number one, uh, it'll be ten dollars for class number one. OK, so. You can uh, go ahead and register for the preview of the class. We're doing that on Saturday. Uh, and then, uh, you'll be all set from there. Then you can register for the, uh, full course. And let me see something here. I want to post this and I I'm going to show it to you here also on our Facebook fan page, the African history network. I told you it's been a busy day. Uh, cause I had to teach three classes this weekend. So it's been a busy day. Uh, let me see here. Uh, so on Facebook, we've got, um, uh, let me go back to this here on our fan page, the African History Network. Uh, so follow us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network, and uh, uh, my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P, also. And we'll go to this here. Okay. Let me turn on the screen share on Facebook. Uh, and then we're going to go back to this topic with Shakari Richardson. We're going to, um, I'm going to show you the differences between her case and Michael Phelps. Um, we'll continue our discussion dealing with, uh, how highways have been used to destroy African-American communities. We'll, we'll continue with that discussion on Monday show. Cause, uh, I'm going to get out of here. It's, uh, it's, it's been a, a busy day. I, I did rolling show for two hours a day. So it's been a busy day. Uh, let me see here. OK, so we've got the preview right here on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network. And you click right here on it and it takes you to the next uh, uh, right here uh, preview. So you can uh, register for that as well. So we have it on Facebook and we just posted the link here, the direct link. Uh, so you can register for that through Crowdcast. All right. And that's the preview for Saturday, uh, July 3rd, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the free the free preview. OK. Uh, I, I want to look at uh, this quickly here, dealing with. Um, Michael Phelps, it was a good article. I, I saw all these idiotic memes floating around. I don't know where y'all get this nonsense from. But if you do like a five minute Google search, half these memes you realize are, are, are BS. A lot of it's just a lot of just misinformation floating around. I don't know where y'all getting this stuff from. And the first thing you should ask, you know, first thing I ask myself is who created this meme? How do they research it? And do they live in the United States of America? That's what I want to know, because when I see all these memes floating around and they don't cite any sources. First question I ask as a researcher, first question I ask is where the hell are they getting this stuff from? So um, let's see, let's go back to this one here. It, it, there was a good article from sportingnews.com, sportingnews.com. It talked about the difference between Shakari Richardson's case and uh, Michael Phelps. And when you go through and look at it and you realize, oh, yeah, uh, the penalty was much harsher for uh, Michael Phelps than Shakari Richardson. Going back first, first I want to go back to the article that we were talking about right before uh, the break from NBC News. Athlete health and well-being continue to be one of USATF's most critical priorities. 
and we will work with Shikari to ensure she has ample resources to overcome any mental health challenges now and in the future, the statement said. Now, the Drug Policy Alliance a nationalization has been working to end cannabis prohibition across the country, said drug testing crushes opportunities, et cetera. OK, that's fine. Uh, Sakari's suspension serves as a cautionary tale and a reminder of how insidious the drug war is uh, in our everyday lives far beyond the, uh, the carceral state. Uh, drug testing does nothing to show current impairment, et cetera. Yeah, but that's that's the policy of the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. So all that is nice, but that don't have nothing to do with what the existing policy is. So, okay, read the rest of this article here. U.S. Sprinter Shakari Richardson suspended for one month after failed drug test. Now, if we look at the uh, article here from Sporting News, sportingnews.com this deals with how shikari richardson and uh michael phelps how their cases are different this is uh, and michael phelps he lost a whole lot more than she did um uh based upon the suspension so if we look at this quickly here um one of the major differences between his case and hers is that Michael Phelps was suspended in February 2009. This was six months after the 2008 Olympics took place. Six months after the 2008 Olympics took place, took place because after the 2008 Olympics, a um, it was month months after the 2008 Olympics, a picture of him smoking marijuana in the bong surfaced he confirmed it was him and it was marijuana so he was suspended in february 2009 now he never tested positive for marijuana before an olympic meet okay it, it, that's different than shikari richardson he never tested positive for marijuana one um to his suspension was for three months. Okay. His suspension was for three months. Her suspension was for one month because she went through the counseling program. Uh, so, and the, the state that he ingested it in, um, it was not legal at the time also. All right. But the, the, their policies are clear. And it was for a non-medical usage uh, with Phelps. It was for a non-medical usage. And it was a, and at the time it was illegal nationwide. Now, the let me um, I want to look at my notes here because I have all this laid out. All right. He lost. His sponsorship with Kellogg. Let's scroll down to this. Um, so from the fallout, suspension included more than just the inability to compete. Uh, Kellogg announced that they were uh, not going to renew his Kellogg announced that, that it would it would not renew his expiring uh, sponsorship deal. Whereas Nike said they're going to stand by Shakari Richardson. She's not going to use lose her sponsorship deal. But also the uh, U.S. Uh, also the U.S. swimming USA swimming. Uh, withdrew, withdrew its financial support for Michael Phelps as well. So he was suspended three times as long. Uh, USA Swimming suspended Michael Phelps from competition for three months and said it would, it would withdraw its financial support of him. Shakari Richardson is suspended for one month. She keeps her sponsorship with Nike. Um, and she tested positive. Michael Phelps never tested positive. These are two entirely different things. What is the Olympic policy on cannabis? According to the uh, U.S. Anti-Doping Agency, marijuana is prohibited by the World Anti-Doping Agency. 
a foundation created by the International Olympic Committee in competition, quote, unless an athlete has an approved therapeutic use exemption, unless an athlete has an approved therapeutic use exemption, end quote. Use of the drug can result in an anti-doping rule violation and sanction. Marijuana is considered a health risk, a performance enhancing substance, and a violation of the, quote, spirit of the sport, okay? Now, according to them, they say it's a performance enhancing substance. Maybe it depends upon the, the, the meat or what have you. According to them, they say it's a performance enhancing substance, maybe because it helps you relax. But USADA adheres to uh, the World Anti-Doping Code, uh, the WADA's World Anti-Doping Code. Now, USA Today states that an athlete, uh, uh, USA, USADA states that an athlete can have cannabis in their system at the time of testing but that the amount cannot exceed 150 nanograms per, millil per milliliter, okay? It cannot exceed 150 nanograms per mil milliliter. Now, the agency also notes that it can take weeks or months for cannabis to leave an athlete's system and that athletes should consult a doctor about a clearance time between the last usage of cannabis and the date of competition. Now, WADA lists hashish and marijuana as prohibited forms of uh, cannabidiol in, it, uh, is an exception. A WADA uh, lists hashish and marijuana as prohibited forms of uh, cannab uh, cannabinoids while noting that cannabidiol is an exception. Athletes can be suspended for up to two years under, under the WADA code for testing positive for marijuana. Now, according to a November 2020 uh, U.S. Anti-Doping Agency advisory to athletes, the minimum suspension is 30 days if an athlete, quote, can establish that the use of a substance of abuse was out of competition and unrelated to uh, sport performance, end quote. And if the athlete successfully completes a substance abuse program that is approved by USADA, end quote. So read this. They have the links where you can read the full, all the rules, all that. She could have she could have gotten three months suspension. She got one month suspension because Michael Phelps got three months suspension. But he, and, uh, and Michael Phelps didn't test positive for marijuana. She did. All right. So check that out. Uh, th this piece here from SportingNews.com. How Shakari Richardson's Olympic suspension differs from Michael Phelps uh, 2009 suspension. Once again, that was like six months after he competed in the uh, Olympics in 2008, the 2008 Olympics. And he didn't test positive for uh, marijuana usage before an Olympic meet. All right. So read the read the full article there and they have links there that you can click on for more information. Uh, if you like the cyber information, you can support the African History Network and we definitely need your support. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. I'll assign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Okay. Um, we're here six days a week. And this helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills. Uh, and we have the information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com also. When you do it through Cash App, be sure to type in dollar sign the AHN show S H O W. This is our official um, Cash App account for the African History Network, and our, our tag is dollar sign the AHN show S H O W, and it'll say Michael and show my picture there. 
These other two are fake uh, African History Network Cash App accounts that somebody set up. So I've already reported them to Cash App. They've been stealing money from us. If you donated to these fake ones, let Cash App know. All right. You can do that through the app. And be sure to register for uh, the online course that starts up uh, Sunday, July 4th, the 4th of July, 2021, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. And um, you can use this with your children also. I would say it's PG-13, okay? And it's not overly graphic or anything like that. I don't don't do a lot of cursing, what have you. Uh, so you can visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You scroll down the homepage, and we have the information there for the online course. Click on register here. As soon as you register, you can uh, start watching the content. Click on enroll on the next page. And then uh, also I am teaching a we're doing a uh, preview uh, of the 10 week. We're doing a free preview of the 10 week online course. We're doing this on Saturday. Uh, July 3rd, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, doing a, a free pre preview of the online course. And we do this through Crowdcast because I teach the class through Crowdcast. So we have the information on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network. Uh, we'll put a link on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. But here is the we're going to post the uh link here also to register for the free preview i'm going to post this here on the thread of the broadcast as well and we have the facebook event invite on our facebook page for it also the link is there as well all right we have to get out of here remember at the african history network we focus on educating and empowering and inspiring people of african descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now let's correct your own behavior it's not over till we win we're kind of forever and we'll talk to you next time. Peace. We'll talk to we'll be we'll be back live uh Monday, uh July 5th. Um with the radio stations re-airing uh rebroadcast Saturday and Sunday. So I won't be on live. Uh, you can listen to the rebroadcast Sunday. We'll probably program something here on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, but I ain't gonna be on live after I teach these three classes. This weekend, I'll probably go to bed and I probably won't get back up till 10 p.m. Uh, Monday, July 5th, one hour before I have to be back on the air. Remember, right now, it's correct for wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you uh, Monday or those in the class. We'll see you Saturday and Sunday for those <laughs> who, who will be in class. Talk to you next time. Peace. Black on Purpose Television Network. Yes, Black on Purpose Television Network. All black. All positive, all the time. The largest black-owned streaming television network in the world. Bringing our people together worldwide. Controlling our messages, our story, our way. Black TV, the way it should be. Black music, black history, and more. 30 plus channels, thousands of shows. Black on Purpose Television Network, subscribe now. Hi, I'm Joel Wilson, President and CEO of JCW Computer Consulting LLC, a technology implementation firm with over 20 years of satisfying customers. We offer a full spectrum of industry top tier branded services. We are an authorized partner or reseller for Lenovo, Zoom, T-Mobile, Microsoft 365 and Surface tablets, Google Workspace, Acer, Asus, Samsung, PCmatic security software, and many more. Our online store features laptops, Chromebooks, computers, printers, accessories, and software. Businesses, take advantage of our free one-hour Zoom tech consultation and know we offer top nationwide high-speed internet service providers, voice over IP, and cellular phone services. Home users, don't miss our current in-stock Chromebook inventory. Please visit us at jcwcc.com or call 215-879-6701. Gain knowledge in minutes from insightful summaries of progressive and socially conscious books. Blacklisted gives you access to curated content that will satisfy your curiosity to learn and understand different perspectives. 
empower yourself through inspirational and actionable ideas. It's easy to read or listen to on the go. Blacklisted. Empower yourself. Start your free trial today. We all know the cannabis industry is headed toward an uprise in the past decade. What happens when there is a brand that brings this uprise in a blow? The cannabis industry welcomes her uprise. Hustle Her Hemp. Delivering excellence with pride is her watchword, and how you choose to embrace it makes it a priority. From cultivating rich cannabis into exquisite and tastefully finished CBD products to delivery, Hustle Her Hemp leaves no stone unturned. Hustle Her Hemp's mission is to empower women of color by building business and creating legacies, uniting beauty, health, and business. We are a pure definition of how we want the CBD industry to become in the future. While we are redefining innovation, we bring the same energy to improving the quality of life. Hustle Her Hemp is the new Uprise. 